Welcome back to Physical Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of real gas behavior and go into a new parameter called compression factor, which is going to be denoted by the capital letter Z. Um, this is sometimes also called the compressibility, uh, but this is the compression factor. And what the compression factor is, is it's a ratio of the real molar volume to the ideal molar volume. So this is the formula right here. We'll expand upon that in a minute. But if you go back to one of the previous videos where we did example problems with the Van der Waals equation of state, we saw that we could get a rough idea of whether or not repulsions or attractions dominate in the gas by comparing the Van der Waals pressure to the ideal pressure. Okay. Now, another very convenient way to do the same thing, telling whether or not repulsions or attractions dominate, is to calculate the compression factor. All right, so um, again, remember that molar volume is simply the quotient. It's you take the actual volume of the gas, the volume of the container, and divide by the number of moles. And this gives you the molar volume. So we can actually calculate the compression factor by dividing the real molar volume by the ideal molar volume. Okay, so with the real molar volume, this is the actual molar volume, okay? Uh, this you simply calculate by taking the volume of the container that the gas is in and divide it by the number of moles of the gas, okay? That's all the real molar volume is. In the denominator, the ideal molar volume, this is the molar volume that you would calculate from the ideal gas equation. So remember the ideal gas equation of state, P equals nRT over V. If we take it and divide through the top and the bottom by the number of moles, we get it in molar quantities where the pressure is equal to RT over the molar volume. Now essentially, the molar volume from the ideal gas equation, if we were to solve for molar volume, becomes RT over P. That's why I have an RT over P here in the denominator. Now, because I've got this pressure here in the denominator of the denominator, I can essentially pull that pressure out in front here. And so my compression factor Z is ultimately equal to the pressure times the real molar volume divided by R divided by the temperature, okay? And for an ideal gas, if the gas was truly behaving ideally, in which case we would not need a real gas equation of state, Z would equal one. But for any gas that's to any extent behaving uh, in a real fashion or it's deviating from ideal behavior, this Z that you're gonna calculate is not gonna be equal to one. It's either gonna be less than one or it's gonna be greater than one, never negative. And ultimately what happens is, is if Z is greater than one, that means within the gas, repulsions dominate, okay? If Z is less than one, attractions dominate. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an example problem where we calculate the compression factor on the next slide and we'll determine whether or not repulsions or attractions dominate in this gas. Okay, here is the example problem. Again, we have the parameters down here so you can see for later. We have 10 moles of a gas is contained in a 50 liter container at a pressure of 10 atmospheres and a temperature of 500 Kelvin. Okay, kind of made a misprint there, but you get the idea. We wanna first calculate the compression factor Z. We wanna get a number, it's unitless, and then we wanna determine if the gas is ideally behaved or real. That's an easy question, we'll get there. And then determine if repulsions or attractions predominate in the gas. All right, so first let's calculate Z. We've got our formula here. Z is equal to the pressure of the gas times the real molar volume divided by RT. All right, so let's bring it over here. And remember that molar volume is the quotient of the volume of the container in which the gas is contained divided by the number of moles of gas. So this just becomes a plug and chug problem. The pressure is given as 10 atmospheres. Uh, the volume is 50 liters and then divided by the number of moles, 10 moles. Now in the denominator, we're gonna use this form of the ideal gas constant because pressure units up here are given as atmospheres and we have liter units up here. So we wanna use 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole per Kelvin. And then our temperature is 500 Kelvin. Now, um, avoiding the time it would take to actually type this out. I've already uh, typed it in my calculator. And it turns out that the compression factor is 1.22. Okay, 1.22. So first of all, that's our answer. It's unitless for the first part here. 
we should probably also answer if it's ideally behaved or real. Now, truly to be ideally behaved, this would have to be pretty much exactly one, okay? Um, it's not, it's 1.22. So that pretty much tells us this gas is gonna be behaving really. It has deviations from ideal behavior. And now we can actually answer the question, Does do repulsions or attractions predominate in this gas? And to do this, we can look at these two parameters here. If Z is greater than one, repulsions dominate. And if Z is less than one, attractions dominate. Well, our compression factor Z is 1.22. That is greater than one. And so we can conclude that in this gas, because Z is greater than one, that repulsions dominate in this gas. That does not mean there's no attractions. There are attractions, but the, re the repulsions uh, play more of a role than the attractions. There's more repulsions than attractions. That would, that's what we mean when we say they dominate, okay? Now, let's suppose you were on an exam, okay? And you were given this question as is, just this part. 10 moles of a gas and so forth to 500 Kelvin. They gave you that information. And then they just said, determine if repulsions or attractions predominate in the gas. And that's all you had, okay? They didn't give you this first part about Z or the second question, okay? Would you calculate the compression factor? Would you calculate the van der Waals pressure and compare it to the ideal gas pressure? Or could you do either one? And actually, there is only one way you could do that in this case, okay? Technically, if you had the constants A and B in the van der Waals equation of state, remember you have to have those experimental parameters. If you had A and B, you could calculate the van der Waals pressure, but if you don't have A or B on an exam, you can't use the van der Waals equation of state to calculate the pressure because you have to have both those parameters. So that option is out. You can't just calculate the pressures, the van der Waals pressure and the ideal pressure and, can, and compare them as we did in the previous video. If you're not given A or B, you absolutely have to use the compression factor. You have to calculate Z. Notice this formula does not require you to know the van der Waals um, A and B parameters. And remember, the van der Waals equation of state is not the only real gas equation. So this is always a safe bet of an equation to determine whether or not attractions or repulsions dominate. Now, if you had a van der Waals gas and you had the parameters A and B, then you could do this or you could calculate the van der Waals pressure and compare it to the ideal pressure. That would be valid in that case. It's not here. You're not given the parameters A and B, so you have to calculate the compression factor in this way. But that's all there is to it. If this were less than one, then attractions would dominate. It's greater than one here, 1.22, therefore repulsions dominate. All right. Hopefully this made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.